These are some of the world's six billion inhabitants. They have something unusual in common. In 1947, their families were chosen, more or less at random, by leading photojournalists to represent our common humanity. In this film, we've tracked down these families throughout the world to learn of their lives over the extraordinary past half century. How has the tribal chief son Kili survived in war-torn Sudan? The death of a much-loved sister in France? What happened to Pablo Gonzalez's 18 children? Bruce Pratt's escape from Pleasantville, USA? Why the village priest tried to stop Rino Guercini's church wedding? Is horsepower the future for Peter Hyatt's farm? How the Okamoto's of Japan face the end of their seven-generation dynasty. War, exile, and revolution, love and divorce, poverty and prosperity, the quest for happiness, and the ups and downs of family life for our chosen people. By 1947, hardened war correspondents like Robert Kappa and George Roger were seeking new challenges. Kappa had covered the American D-Day landing at Omaha Beach. Roger had photographed the relief of Belson concentration camp. To photograph the piece, they had become two of the four founding members of a cooperative photo agency called Magnum. We divided the, the, the world into four. Uh, really rather like God, in a way. Uh, just like, uh, you know, cutting an orange into four sectors. And um, we each took the parts that we were most interested in and where we knew our way around. I had Africa and the Middle East, and Kappa had America and a sort of ambassador at large. American writer John Morris, who had covered the War for Life magazine, was also looking for peacetime work. After the war, where I was a war correspondent, I thought, how can we bring uh, photography to bear on, world, on the problem of world understanding? Let's give peace a chance. And at that time, I was, became picture editor of Ladies' Home Journal, which was a great American monthly for women. The Ladies' Home Journal was probably the best read magazine in for women in USA in the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. A tremendous circulation, and it was quite adventurous in its stories and um, moved very much with the times. Kopp had been having an affair with Ingrid Bergman, and he was somewhat unhappy and frustrated. He, decided, he and John Steinbeck cooked up a project to go to Russia together and to do a story on ordinary people in the Soviet Union. And that seemed to me to be a good subject for Ladies' Home Journal. I had an, another idea, which turned out to be a series called People Are People, The World Over. Twelve families throughout the world, every month, for 12 months. And we did that by photographing things that every family everywhere has to do. So we picked farming, which is the universal occupation, and we hoped that this would bring a sense of commonality around the world. People were curious to know what was happening to the French, what was happening to the people in China, what was happening to the Japanese that, that were so horribly bombed. Could we still be one world again and, uh, and not enemies? It would be wonderful if we could show that people are people all the world over. People Are People was Magnum's international debut. John Morris wrote articles that pulled together the photographer's work into a 12-part series. Here are 88 of the two billion people who inhabit the planet Earth. They are posing for a photographer sent by an American magazine, The Ladies' Home Journal. I think of myself as being a shy girl, being overwhelmed by this famous man that was staying with us for a few days to take these photos. It had such a profound effect on me. It was 1945, he was in Germany, and then he came in 1947. So he was a man that's just come from the war. 
Er hatte seinerzeit gesagt, äh, ungefähr in 50 Jahren wollte er wiederkommen und dann diese Sache äh, zu wiederholen, um dann den Unterschied äh, zu sehen. Soweit ich davon weiß, ist er im Krieg in, in Ägypten gefallen, 1956, bei der Suezkrise. <lacht> Mi ricordo di questa, di questa fotografa americana che, veniva, che è venuta a farci queste foto, seguivo, ero sempre dietro, ero sempre in macchina con questa fotografa. Avevo una cipettina, una jeep, una macchinina che mi avevano regalato gli americani e che, in cui ci tenevo molto. Le photographe, euh, par lui-même, je ne me rappelle pas beaucoup de lui. De... Il photographiait à l'époque avec un flash à l'ampoule et on avait fait une collection majestueuse d'ampoules de, de, de flash. I remember the car, the big black car, coming into the farmyard and men getting out that were in business suits and I remember I was afraid and I can remember running to my father and actually standing behind him because it wasn't something that normally happened. Claro, me quedaron como recuerdo. Las personas que conozco, que platico con ellos, les enciendo mi historia. Les digo, miren, eh? Y ya sí, nada más por los recuerdos, ¿ves? We flew to Des Moines. Uh, I'll never forget taking off from LaGuardia because the first thing Bob did was to ask for an oxygen mask, which seemed to me a little peculiar. But he explained that he'd been celebrating his first peacetime assignment and uh, a little late the previous night, and he was suffering from a hangover, and oxygen was good for that. So we landed in Des Moines that night, and on Sunday morning, headed west on US 30. And we'd only been gone an hour and a half when we came to a little farm community named Glidden. And there was a classic American farm on the outskirts of town with a red barn and a nice looking farmhouse. And we drove in and introduced ourselves and found that the farmer and his wife had three kids. And they, they just looked as though they'd been picked by Hollywood Central Casting for the parts. So we asked their permission to photograph their daily lives, and they agreed. And uh, the next morning, Bob started work. Robert Kappa's photographs of the Pratt family of Iowa became the template for the magazine series, to be repeated by other photographers as they set off in search of families throughout the world. The tiled farmhouse of Wu Fu Yuan has stood for two centuries, and he faithfully follows the way of his ancestors. About all the schooling the Wu children will get in chaotic China is what is handed down from father to son. The Hoos have neither radio, nor books, nor magazines, nor newspapers. Their pleasure is the simple things they do themselves. The Hu family of Jardin were first photographed during the last stages of the 23-year civil war that finally brought Chairman Mao Zedong to power. Their village has been swallowed up by Shanghai. But the Hus are still there, working in factories and living in flats built over the very fields their ancestors tilled for centuries. Then 
，那个李老走了好几天。Ho Fu Yuan would scarcely recognize his home today. Some of the great events of 20th century history have swept over his fields and family. 当时我读书呢，实际上冬天很认真的。嗯，当时春节前天不错的。那么后来呢？因为文化大革命，因为这个学学校关门了，有的到北京串联去了，有有有、呃、有有的嘛参加红卫兵了。所以当时呢，我有一个想法，反反正自己是农民出身的，我爹娘都是农民出身的，我会还是回家种点为好，做种点为好也呃思想上，你搞文化大革命，总得要知道思想，把我们中国搞好。但是我种田也是搞好，因为你们出去造反呀、串联呀，这个很很浪费时间。我反反正回回回来干活。我的思想概念上，嗯，这个转折点在一九七八年，就是邓邓小平呢，就是改革开放，我们农村发生了翻天覆覆地的变化。以前我们买一辆自行车、买个手表是算了不起的，但是现在呢。你就是买，买叫那那个摩托车，有的人有的买小汽车了要，所以发展到这样的地步。Grandmother Ho Ching does all the cooking for the family, enabling her daughter-in-law to work in the fields. Well, 后头你家做几把油，再烧几个方向，能做过去。现在过去了，像你这两头，你现在到地里去削地了。呃，劳动力进改土的要削地了，像你现在可能你是叫站在屋里下，搓搓菜、铺铺家务，到街上去喂喂